Alright guys, welcome back to a video that I really didn't want to have to make until after today. Uh, but unfortunately I sit here on Thursday morning after England exit the World Cup making this for you guys, uh, which <laughs> obviously uh, not planned but <laughs> it's likely to go live on uh, Sunday so that's going to be an awkward one but never mind. Uh, I want to just have a bit of a reflection on England's World Cup uh, performances and, and individual player reviews basically. Um, I want to say as a little like just before I get on to the individual players um, that I feel gutted and proud at the same time like I never would have thought at the start of the World Cup that England would have made the semi-finals um, in recent years in international competitions we've been an absolute laughing stock and I think for a change we've actually managed to um, you know make it to the semi-finals which really is something and possibly I don't I won't know when t you guys will know when you watch this and I'll know once this has gone live but at the minute I don't know if we're gonna get the third place or not that's got to be a game that we play on uh, Saturday but yeah um we're gonna get into it now anyway now like I said I don't want to I'm not here please don't click on this video expecting to hear negativity because it's all gonna be positive uh, I'm afraid for you uh, pessimistic tools out there click right off this video and let's get into it so Jordan Pickford probably surprised me uh, he was one of the players that surprised me the most. I'm not going to say he surprised me more than anyone else. Um, what a goalkeeper he is. Absolutely fantastic. You know, I remember at the start when the, the squad was announced, looking at this, seeing Pickford and uh, Pope and Butland, and I was thinking that is a massive risk to take such young goalkeepers. Uh, we didn't really see anything of, of the other two. It was, it was all Pickford. It was the Jordan Pickford show, uh, unfortunately for Butland and Pope. But he did so well. I think it would have been very harsh to not play him uh, in any of the games. So massive respect to Pickford. He, he played some brilliant saves for us. Obviously made a save uh, in that penalty shootout as well against Colombia, which was very key to us. Um, and you know that was just that was just phenomenal and some of the other saves that he's made like some of the saves he made against Sweden were absolutely phenomenal and what a brilliant young goalkeeper he is um he's got a bit of a cocky attitude but i think he's got every right to be at the end of the day this guy has had critics on his back saying that he's too short to be a goalkeeper he won't be a good goalkeeper because he's too short because of his height uh and i just love the fact that he's been able to prove his critics wrong next up we have got manchester city's kyle walker um again a great a, a player well to be honest a player that i would have expected to get into the world cup side who's one of the best fullbacks uh actually in the league let alone in Eng you know in england uh well english yeah out of the other english players uh, never mind moving on moving on um a fantastic good defender and a very very pacey um he took on a new role as a center back and i feel like he did quite well yes he did make a mistake in um giving a penalty away but he learned from that mistake um and like he said in his interview after it, it was one of them where it was 50 fit like it, it was one of them where sometimes they're given sometimes they're not at the end of the day um but you know what he did well after that i think um blow that little blip but yeah bar that little blip there um i think you know having somebody with his pace at center back it was very very key for us because uh, we came up against some opponents that had a lot of pace going forward um and attack like especially with colombia um and i think it was very key to have that uh, somebody like Walker there at the back for us um, and he developed a very good partnership actually at the back with the likes of Stones and Maguire who uh, we will move on to next uh, next up we've got Danny Rose and um, you know what I feel like he he mainly sort of came made an impact from the bench uh, sort of came on and just sort of finished the job off in, in the games that he did come on uh, bar Croatia of course uh, but yeah I, I didn't I don't really want to speak too much uh, I, I'm not going to speak about players that we didn't really see an awful lot of 
Um, but yeah, Rose seemed to be a good impact substitution to bring on. And that's how we, we seem to have used him. Um, and it got us to the semi-finals at the end of the day. So that seemed to work out pretty well. Eric Dyer was another one that um, mainly came off from the bench uh, to come on for England. And obviously, I think his highlight of the World Cup will definitely be scoring that penalty, that winning penalty um, against uh, Colombia. That was just fantastic that was really really good stuff uh and i was really pleased with that and well i think the whole nation was and everybody seemed to love eric dyer uh right then and a good a good player a good player um like i say okay when we needed him to do a job he delivered john stone shocked everybody in uh managing to score a brace for england well done john stones and you know what defensively he wasn't too bad either I've said this back to Kyle Walker, but I really felt that the defence did well. Like, the back three really seemed to work. Um, I, I think, in all honesty, if I'm going to pick where we were mainly at fault, I think it was midfield, especially against Croatia. We just gave the ball away a lot in midfield. Um, but, yeah, moving back to Stones, obviously, congratulations to him for scoring two goals for his country in a major uh, tournament. Um, and brilliant absolutely phenomenal from him um and at the back him and harry and and kyle just developed a really good little partnership together um and they seemed so calm and i feel like southgate has really worked on that area on having a more sort of calm approach defensively whereas recent in recent years at the back we've seen very very uh, nervous and stuff whereas there's, there's definitely more of a calm feel um, when England defend oh Harry Maguire wow um, probably it's a it's a massive toss up between him and Pickford as to who impressed me the most uh, and who shocked me the most actually I think I'm slightly leaning towards Maguire because I looked at Maguire and seeing him in defence, I was thinking, oh my God, Southgate, what are you doing? Like this guy, he's played, he's just played for Leicester. He's not really like, he's not really experienced. When you look at Gary Cahill, you think like, well, Cahill's experienced at least with Chelsea. He's won stuff. And it's like, Maguire, oh, what has this guy really got? Like what kind of experience has he got? But youth prevailed, like youth became key to England's success, I think. Um, and massive congratulations to, I was so, but I think, I feel like the whole nation was absolutely buzzing for Maguire um, when he got his goal versus uh, Sweden. That was a, a lovely header, a brilliant header. And it's such a shame that we couldn't have seen uh, any more goals like that. Uh, from Harry but I think like yeah it's safe to say we definitely improved in set pieces we look a lot more like scoring from set pieces I've, I've actually never really known England score so much from set pieces which is brilliant um which was brilliant I was you know the main reason like I think everybody was so buzzing for Maguire is the fact that if you uh I think in, when it was the Euros right in France Harry Maguire went with his mates and his family to watch England play in the Euros as an England fan and then to see him score for his nation in the World Cup is just phenomenal just two years later that's just insane so hats off to Harry I'm absolutely I'm honestly I'm absolutely buzzing for the guy um and yeah just just brilliant absolutely phenomenal from harry uh next up we've got jay lings or jesse lingard uh, managed to get himself a goal again in the world cup uh, versus panama um it wasn't bad from what i saw i feel like he was probably a little bit more quiet than what we used to see from lingard i didn't feel like he really uh, of course he got the goal for, for, uh, against Panama which is great for him and it was a really good goal as well it was a very nicely hit strike uh, but I feel like he's capable of more than that and I feel like he didn't deliver as much as what we were all expecting um, So, but yeah I don't want to be too negative really about any individual uh, next up Jordan Henderson now just to get the negative out of the way yes he did miss a penalty which is probably the clear sort of negative for him uh, in this tournament uh, but in all honesty uh, well he had the penalty saved and I 
personally think that it was more of a good save than a bad penalty. Uh, but moving on from that anyway, besides that, Henderson was very creative in midfield. I've always been really critical of Jordan Henderson. Um, being an Arsenal fan, he's often compared to the likes of Ramsey uh, and co. And I've always hated that. Um, I've never really thoroughly watched him. Um, but in all honesty, he did he did impress me. Um, he, he really did overall quite impress me. I was quite pleased with Henderson's performances. He played some brilliant balls going forward. Um, obviously, in the game against Sweden, he, he picked out Sterling a couple of times and was let down uh, by his former Liverpool teammate. Uh, Sterling just not clinical enough in front of goal. Um, but I think overall, Henderson had a decent tournament for me. I felt quite sorry for him because I feel like in midfield, that's where we were mostly let down. Um, and I feel like if Henderson had probably had more of a stronger midfielder beside him, um, I think we probably missed somebody like Chamberlain or Lallana uh, in that regard. I think a pivot of Henderson and Chamberlain or Henderson and Lallana would have worked really well. Of course, he'd have the chemistry with those players as well with playing with them at Liverpool. Um, so, yeah, I feel like that would have worked out a bit better. But in regards to the midfield, I don't really think Henderson was the problem. And I'm not saying that Lingard was the problem. I'm just saying that I think um, having the two together, I, I feel like they could, there could have been a better chemistry in that regard and I feel like that it could have been I just feel like they weren't suited to each other I didn't feel like they complemented each other um, but overall I, I do feel uh, alright with Henderson I feel like you know he I, he's not I'm not really angry at any player in particular I have to say um, yeah Harry Kane um, mixed on Harry Kane really mixed actually uh, he obviously got us through in the Tunisia game, brilliant, he was a hero straight away, then dropped off a bit. Um, I really didn't like where he was played, I didn't like his role, um, I, do, I, I think again, this is not knocking Sterling, but I don't feel that Kane and Sterling worked, I feel like Kane and Vardy would have worked much better. Um, Sterling just isn't clinical enough and I feel like Kane must have been so frustrated with that because again Kane like Anderson would play Sterling through and Sterling would miss Sterling would hit it straight at the goalkeeper and I don't mean to slip the slate Sterling Sterling did well Sterling created a lot of chances I just think that we could have switched it up a bit I, I don't feel like Sterling should have played in that position I feel like it should have been Vardy I know we're talking about Kane here but like I say I think Kane didn't perform as well as what we all would have hoped and he was a bit quiet but if you look at where Kane was in most of the games he was coming back he was he was acting more like a false nine than a striker um, and I think we simply were asking too much of Kane and I think he needed another striker there with another proper clinical finisher type striker with him somebody like Vardy up there with him Sterling um, I feel sorry for him I do feel a bit sorry for him he's on a lot of money at the end of the day yes we all know that but he's not as bad as everybody makes out. Again, I feel like it was more the position that he was playing. The role that he was playing in didn't suit him. He created a lot of chances and that is who Sterling is. Sterling doesn't score your goals. Sterling creates your chances. Sterling gets past people with his pace and skill. And then is the type of player that should be squaring it. I do feel like he was a bit selfish in some situations. But I feel like, I honestly feel like... Uh, watching him against Sweden was the most frustrating I've ever I've ever been with a player. That is the most frustrated I've ever been at a player before. Um, but watching Sterling against Sweden, it was like I I kind of got the vibe that he knew he was missing these chances that he should have been putting away. That other you know clinical players would have been put in a way i feel like he knew that people were getting frustrated with him i feel like his own teammates were getting frustrated with him for wasting all these chances 
and I feel like he made it worse for himself because he was then trying too hard to do something amazing to really make up for it which is the right sort of attitude but I just think yeah he, he was very lucky to start all of the games for me I feel like um I feel sorry for the likes of Vardy and also I mentioned this before the likes of Welbeck who poor Danny Welbeck didn't see a minute of World Cup football um, and I feel like when you're looking at Sterling missing those chances as another attacker you've got to be thinking Rashford as well actually you've got to be looking and think how the hell is this guy playing ahead of me when I I deserve the chance to be to be taking those chances because he keeps missing them all. Uh, Jamie Vardy didn't really play that much, uh, obviously played against Belgium, feel like he was sort of on his own up top uh, and he wasn't getting the right service that he needed against Belgium. Um, a good striker on his day at the end of the day is an absolute, he works like a horse at the end of the day, he, he really does, he, he is a proper workhorse. Um, and I do, like I say, felt quite sorry that he didn't get uh, the game time that I feel like he deserved. Like I say, I would have loved to have seen a partnership duo up top of Kane and, and Vardy. I feel like it would have worked much better. Kieran Trippier scored a brilliant free kick against Croatia. Unfortunately, the free kick wasn't rewarded with a win. Um, I feel like he really proved himself to be a, ve a very key player for England actually throughout the tournament. I thought he was very solid, uh, won the ball a lot when we'd lost it um, and kept it well as well and proved to be a real threat from uh, from taking the set pieces, delivered some good, some good uh, set pieces and some good shots as well from set pieces. Obviously one of them paying off against Croatia but unfortunately not meaning, not really standing for anything in the end. Marcus Rashford deserved more game time for me. I can't really speak an awful lot about him because we just didn't really see much of him at all. Um, some players, guys, I'm not even going to put in the video because they just simply didn't play enough and it's, it's hard to sort of summarise something that you didn't really see uh, much of. So just felt sorry for him. I felt when he came on, he made a difference. Uh, we we would sort of have a bit of a boost in energy and we seemed more like scoring with him on the field um a much more clinical player um loftus cheek was another player i wanted to see more of actually when the squad was first released i was really excited for him and really happy to see him uh, make the team um again i feel like he did well when he did play um, he's very, very strong on the ball. He's got a bit of pace about him as well. And he's a tall guy as well. So he's got that threat, that physical presence there. Um, I think it would have been nice, really nice to see um, a bit more of a bit more of Loftus Cheek. And I think definitely he will be, uh, you know, obviously keeping fitness provided and, and you know, no more uh, big injuries for this guy. Uh, he will be a really good player um in in uh, years to come um and actually guys you know what i'm gonna end it there so i hope you all have enjoyed this video it's been nice to recap i have to say well done england and well done boys for getting into the semi-finals because you definitely excelled my beliefs uh and i feel like they brought the whole nation together everybody was believing i mean my family who people in my family that don't even watch football that don't even like football have been on absolute strings with england and gone through it all with them watch the world cup uh whereas usually they just wouldn't even watch wouldn't even bother watching football so it's been really nice to see everybody sort of come together as a nation and i hope we can keep with that um definitely kyle walker tweeted earlier today that you know about unity and about we've got to keep it going um obviously we've got the euros coming up next and uh i hope that we can do well in them and i think as long as we can continue to develop um it could be it could be special times for england now maybe we've finally got back to that level where we used to be at a, a long time ago just maybe uh but thank you guys very much for watching if you have enjoyed this video please leave a like rating that would mean a great deal to me uh, and if you could subscribe if you are not already subscribed as well guys that would be great uh, thank you all very much for watching 
um and yeah i look forward to seeing you guys in future videos